Okay, I'm gonna start over. I actually started this video and someone called me and I thought I had phone blocked, but. So I'm not gonna rewrite this stuff, I'm gonna tell you. So here's the situation we have. We have a train and you're inside this train, this train car, and there's no windows you can't see outside, but you look and you see that there is this thing hanging from the ceiling and it swings back a 15 degree angle from the vertical. And the question is, can we calculate the acceleration of the train? And the answer is yes, we can. So the first thing you might want to say is, well, uh, shouldn't the net force on this object be zero? And that's not true. If you're in the train, it might look like the mass is not accelerating, but the mass is accelerating because you're also accelerating in the train. So that's what's called a non-inertial reference frame. We use uh, the force laws in an inertial reference frame. So that means not accelerating. If you were to look outside the train and it had a giant window, and I know, I just said it didn't have a window, but it's got a window right there, okay? You would see that the mass is indeed accelerating, okay? So the first thing, so this is not true. The net force is not zero. So what forces are acting on the mass? Well, we can break these into two types. We have long range forces and contact forces. And this is, this is just an artificial breakup because everything is essentially long range, okay? Uh, but the long range forces are things with, that interact and don't touch. So the interaction between the mass and the earth, the gravitational interaction is a great example of that. Everything else would have to be, quote, touching. It's not really touching if you think about it at the atomic level, but so we have the string touching the mass and it can exert a force in the direction of the string. That's one of the things about strings. So if I draw a free body diagram, I have the mass, I have the gravitational force pulling down and it's proportional to the gravitational field G and then I have the tension this way. And then this angle is 15 degrees, I'll call it theta. And you can see right there, there's no way for these two forces to add up to the zero vector. There's no way for it to be uh, at rest. It has to be accelerating. So let's use our uh, force equation in two directions. Let's call this the x direction and the y direction. So if I say net force in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x direction, net force in the y direction is zero. Because in this case, I'm assuming the train's on a level track. It's not moving up or down. It's not accelerating up or down, so that has to be zero. Okay, so what forces are acting in the y direction? Well, I have the gravitational force pulling down, so I can write F net y equals negative mg. And you'll notice here that's not negative because that's a vector. It's pointing down and it's in the negative y direction, but we don't say that's a negative. And then I have a component of this tension pulling up. So if I draw that tension force, there's T, there's theta, that's t in the y direction. That's t in the x direction. That's the that's theta. So that's the adjacent side. So I'm going to get plus t cosine theta equals zero. Now it's important to realize that uh, when we find components of vectors, you have to actually look at the situation. Don't say oh sine is y, cosine is x. That's not true. But right here, I can solve for t. So I'm gonna add mg to both sides. I get t cosine theta equals mg. Divide by cosine theta, I get t equals mg over cosine theta. Now let's look at the x direction. F net x equals what force is acting in the x direction? Well, I have part of this tension force. It's gonna be that tx. So this is t sine theta because it's the opposite side and that's going to be equal to m times a x. Now I can put in my expression for t into there and I get mg move that up a little bit. mg sine theta over cosine theta equals m a x. The masses cancel. Yay. And I'm done. So I get a x equals g sine theta over cosine theta, which is equal to tangent theta. You don't have to put that in there. So now I'm gonna put 9.8 times tangent of 15 degrees, and I'm gonna put that in my calculator. So I'm gonna drop that last problem, 9.8, enter, 15 tangent times, and I get 2.6 
three meters per second squared, which actually is pretty fast, pretty good at high acceleration. But there you go. That's the acceleration of a train when you have this thing swinging back like that.